Hello guys, today we will explain activity 2 in chapter 4 which is the organization of nervous system in invertebrates. Uh, we will talk uh, today about the shrimp, the organization of nervous system in shrimp. Uh, as you know, the shrimp is one of the most important uh, is one of the most important invertebrates. Here is a diagram showing the body of the shrimp, of a dissected shrimp. Uh, as you see, its nervous system is simple uh, and consists of a long ganglionic chain. It is a long ganglionic chain starting at the head and, uh, and ending at its tails. Now, in the head, there are three pairs of nerves. Uh, we have the optic nerve. This is the optic nerve. Uh, uh, the optic nerve uh, receive information from the eyes. Okay, so the optic nerves receive information from the eye. And as you see, I have a pair of optic nerves. The antennary nerve that controls the antenna. Uh, that senses that senses any vibration in water. So this is the antennary nerve. This is the antennary nerve. Okay. This is the antennary nerve that uh, uh, controls the antenna and senses any vibration in water. And the antennular nerve. This is the antennular nerve that is connected to the antennular flagellum, uh, which is the scent device in the shrimp. It allow uh, it allows the shrimp to uh, smell. Now, in its neck, there are two ganglia, one above the esophagus called the supraesophageal ganglion and one below the esophagus, which is the subesophageal ganglion. So, as you see, this is the esophagus. The one above the esophagus is called the supraesophageal ganglion and the one below the esophagus, it is the subesophageal ganglion. Now, in the thoracic area, we have three thoracic ganglia, okay? We have the first, the second, and the third. Pay attention, this is, this is not a ganglion, okay? So, this is the first thoracic ganglion, and this is the second, and this is the third thoracic ganglion. Now, in the abdominal area, we have six abdominal ganglions. Okay, uh, this is the first one. We say this is the first abdominal ganglion, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. The last one controls the telson. This is the telson of the shrimp. Okay, so the last one controls the telson of the shrimp. Uh, now, uh, the, if I want to talk about the nervous message of the shrimp, as you know, it will start by the sensory organs, which are the antenna, the eyes, and the antennular flagellum. It will pass to the ganglion, okay? And then the ganglion will uh, integrate this message and send a motor message to the effector organs in this shrimp. Uh, as uh, I told you, the shrimp is considered to be invertebrate because its nervous system is not protected by any vertebral column. It is, not, it is not protected by a backbone. And uh, uh, note that the nervous system of the shrimp is located ventrally and not dorsally as that in vertebrates, okay? So the nervous system in invertebrates is located ventrally, okay? Now we will see a comparative table between uh, the nervous system in vertebrates and that in the invertebrates. So the example here, the shrimp and fish, uh, we, we have to compare between the, uh, the nervous system in vertebrates and that of the invertebrates. In invertebrates, it is made up, uh, the nervous system is made up of chain of ganglia, while that in vertebrates, it is made up of brain and spinal cord. In the uh, invertebrates, it is located ventrally, while in vertebrates, in like fish, it is located dorsally. Uh, the nervous system of invertebrates is not protected by a vertebral column or backbone, while that of the vertebrates is protected by a skull and a vertebral column. Uh, this is activity 2. See you later.